name is Mindaji Bastida from the Otomi Toltec peoples. We are here today honoring the Otomi Toltec from the Central Mexico and the Aztec Olmec peoples. Uh, soy Aurelio Ramírez de la comunidad de Amatlan de Quetzalcoatl, en donde tenemos todos los lugares sagrados como uno de ellos que estamos aquí eh, visitando y al mismo tiempo llenándonos de esa energía que estas dos piedras que nos están eh, dando esa vida, esa alegría y esa salud. Por eso aquí estamos agradeciendo y haciendo esta ceremonia. So, James Aurelio, uh, spiritual guide from uh, Amatlan of Quetzalcoatl, Morelos, Mexico. We are here in this sacred site, the two rocks touching, that give us joy, give us happiness, give us life. So we are here to greet you. So now we are going to touch and honoring the mind, the spirit, and the body. And at this time, we want to acknowledge as well the Taino peoples that have been struggling to recover dignity and self-determination, and also the Maasai peoples of Africa that also are struggling to recover peace and dignity and also of self-determination. We are going to, to blow the conch so the purpose earth is lit and is blessed. To the, to the east. Na, yoho, you. to the west. Na, yoho, hiu. the south. Na, yoho, you. Now to the north. Na, yoho, you. Nah, yoho, you to the Father Sky. Nah, yoho, hiu. Thank 
your mother ass. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. And may this gathering be blessed with all the peoples around the world. We ask for unification. We ask for reciprocity with Mother Earth. We ask for peace in the world with dignity. Because we are remembering who we are as human beings. Remembering, remembering that we are here just for a while, not forever. So we remember our ancestors and also the future generations to come. May peace and dignity prevail in the world, in Mother Earth, in the celestial bodies. So be it. Kamadi. Thank you. Tlaso Kamadi. Tlaso Kamadi. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome. What a beautiful blessing this was. Um, thank you to Minha Bastidas and Ana Aurelio um, for this wish um, for peace for all of us and for everybody around the world who are joining us. I've been looking at all of your messages. It's so beautiful. The energy here feels so, so incredibly ah, touching. Um, something that they say is about remembering who we are as human beings so what a beautiful message um if you can if you haven't yet uh, share in the chat where you are um where you're joining us from and maybe you can share who the stewards of like the first stewards of the land are for you for me i'm in the dominican republic and for me is the taínos los taínos um, but, you know, we're so excited to get started. We are here to celebrate change makers all around the world. Um, we're here to celebrate our 2022 grant recipients for Purpose Earth that you're going to learn more about all of this. If you're someone maybe invited you here, so you're going to learn more about what this is, or maybe you're family. Um, and if you're here, there's a reason why you're here, your family already. Uh, my name is Laura Peña. And I am the founder of She is the Universe, a global movement for girls empowerment. And I'm also a recipient, a 2021 recipient for, for a grant for Purpose Earth. Um, and um, I am here to just um, be with you, with all of you, and to share all of these beautiful projects um, with you. And so we also have here Dr. Marty K. Casey. Hello, Dr. Marty. Hello, how are you? Oh my gosh, you look so radiant in your hot pink. I just love it. It's such an honor to be here with you today celebrating. This is the celebration of change makers. And wow, such powerful words because change makers, they truly are. But of course, you know something about this because you are also a change maker. And we were so excited uh, with Purpose Earth to find you last year. And when you were a recipient and all of the wonderful work that you are doing, along with those who we are highlighting and celebrating today, I'm so excited and can't wait to get into the program. But I first would like to uh, send um, a special hug, if you will, out to our co-creators, Emmanuel. <laughs> and Laura Rose, yes, Purpose Earth. If you want to know how Purpose Earth started, it started, how it began, it began with these two wonderful humans and souls that um, they understand the power of giving, of giving back. They understand that power. And I'm so excited that I am uh, one of the uh, the council members uh, with Purpose Earth, Purpose Earth uh, Grant Selection Council member, to be exact, along with 
four other amazing individuals that you will meet a little bit later. And then, of course, we want to say hello to the production team, because this could not be possible if it was not for the production team doing all of the wonderful long hours and hard work behind the scenes. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and get started. But I am Dr. Marty with Ungun Institute, where we help individuals disarm trauma. My motto is hurt people, hurt people, heal people, heal people. So I'm in business and we're in business to help individuals heal along with these other powerful change makers. I can't wait to get started. Lada, you want to go ahead and get us on in there right away? Yes. Actually, before we get started, um, because we, you know, the world, um, we're here to celebrate, but there's so many things happening around the world so many people suffering. So we wanna acknowledge that as well. Um, and we would love to take a minute to just like breathe all of us together. Um, so I will invite you, um, if you're able to put your hand, one hand in your heart, uh, maybe one hand in your belly and just like take a deep breath with us. And we're gonna inhale through our nose. And then exhale, maybe make a sound and send love and peace to all of those who might not have it right now. Um, and just for them to know that we love them. So something that we do with the girls that we work um, with, my friend Sara Surani taught me this, uh, you put your hands, right? Exactly where you have them and then say, amor, 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 and send it like this. And then you're sending amor, amor, amor to everybody. So with me, if you wanna do amor, amor, amor to everybody. Oh my goodness. I love that. Sending love in Spanish. I love it. I love that so much. Oh my goodness. I, I don't know about you all, but you definitely, you have landed in the right place today. You are going to be so amazed, so excited, so changed, so inspired after meeting and seeing these wonderful videos and hearing these interviews that have been prepared just for today. So you're in a very special place. However, I want to say this. If by any chance you can't stay for the whole program, make sure that you come back later and you, um, you, you review this at a later time and share this with everyone. You are getting an opportunity right now to go around the world with us. We're about to take a trip. And so I'm turning it back over to my lovely co-host. Thank you, Dr. Marty. Um, there's so many... Uh beautiful things. I'm just, I can't wait for you to um, see all of this. Uh, but before I want to tell you a little bit about, about my experience as a grant recipient for uh, 2021, um, just being part of this, just so you kind of understand what this, like, we're, we're going to show uh, you the five uh, recipients for this year. And I want you to understand that, yes, this is a, a financial support, beautiful, but also the mentorship component to this grant is amazing. The things that I've been able to, um, to do and the team that I've been able to grow and the things that, you know, we are now 40 plus girls, uh, for, girls from 40 plus countries around the world in our, um, in our empowerment uh, uh, community. And, um, and this couldn't have happened without, uh, you know, the support of this beautiful family. And this, this mentorship program uh, supported me and my organization into becoming a 501c3 uh, nonprofit, which is amazing. Uh, and to do so many programs um, that what right now we're doing a, a leadership uh, program here in the Dominican Republic. Um, so yeah, I just want to share that with you. And Dr. Marty, show us, like, tell us about this map. Oh, I'm so excited about this map. And let me tell you why. With the uh, Grants Council, um, we sit around and we talk about many different things in our meetings. And, and we try to think of different ways of, of what we can create and how we can um, we can add different resources. Well, Kevin is, is also a, a, a council member. And Kevin said, I think it would be awesome and amazing if we were able to take everyone who we are supporting and place them on the map together where everyone can see exactly where they are in the world and who we're supporting. And, and this has just been amazing because from that framework, we were able to pass that thought on to the production team. And voila, look at here, isn't this beautiful? Do you see your lovely face on there? I do. I, <laughs> it's just, it. I mean, so many I'm, people that I know. 
I know that, I mean, our past recipients, this year's recipients, this is so wonderful and amazing. So again, when you share this out to, with your friends and family, make sure that they go ahead and take a look at this map so they can see exactly, oh, I didn't know someone is in London. Oh, I didn't know someone is, is, is in the United States in Chicago or, you know, Brazil and all these different wonderful places, Kenya. And so here we are. I'm just, I'm just overjoyed today. <laughs> I'm so uh, overjoyed. So and beautiful. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> oh, thank you, Kevin, so much. This map is beautiful and seeing all the projects. Um, and we're ready to show you more um, about the recipients from this year. And, uh, you know, when people, sometimes people ask me, like, how do you find your purpose? How do you know what your purpose is? And something that I always say is sometimes a yes is, is what lights you up, but sometimes it's what breaks your heart. What is it that breaks your heart? And then there could be your answer right there. Um, so one person that I know personally who followed this um, is our next recipient. It's our first one of them. And uh, uh, her project, uh, she took something that really breaks her heart and she made something with it. She saw kids um, that were not being educated that were just on the streets when the pandemic started in her community and she started teaching them in their backyard of her house. And so uh, then now she's taking this to the next level and her project is called Teaching for the Future, Educando para el Futuro. And her name is Nicaudis. And um, Nicaudis is a Montessori teacher. And um, let's watch a video about Nicaudis. This is Nicaudis Basket Women. Este proyecto significa amor, paz, alegría, un proyecto que me inspiró al ver los niños de mi comunidad sin tener la oportunidad de ir a la escuela o sin tener la oportunidad de tener padres preparados que le puedan enseñar. Yo tengo una hermana que tiene 19 años, ya tiene tres niños pequeños. Ninguno asistía a la escuela a un centro público, pero queda muy lejos de aquí, es a la familia que tiene niños pequeños no poder tener la suficiente economía para pagar un pasaje entonces ellos cuando se iban a trabajar siempre lo dejaban con un hermano o la vecina o una tía pero muchas veces esos niños quedaban al cuidado de otros niños en cuarentena yo trabajaba en un colegio llamado tres mariposas montessori Cada vez que yo venía y veía a esos niños no estaban haciendo nada productivo que le ayudara en un futuro. Me da bastante tristeza. Yo le propuse a los padres que iba a hacer una pequeña escuelita donde ellos pudieran asistir cuando yo llegara de trabajar. Los padres se sentían emocionados y cuando se lo contaron a los niños también, ellos decían, sí, sí. Yo me sentía súper preocupada porque no tenía ni el espacio ni la suficiente economía. Yo no tenía nada, pero buscaba. Yo buscaba materiales. Donde yo trabajaba, me traía muchas cosas. Cuando yo adelante, con la ayuda de varias personas, pude salir adelante. Me sentía tan feliz cada vez que yo veía a esos niños viniendo. Aún estaba lloviendo. Esa hambre, como quien dice, de aprender. Sembremos la educación, la seguridad, la inspiración en cada niño para en un mañana cosecharlo. Wow. Ah, listening um, to Nicaudi, it's always like almost brings me to tears or makes me cry. So I'm trying not to cry right now. Ah. When she stated that the children had a hunger to learn. Mm -hmm that just grabbed my heart yeah. because what I love is that she was able to create something from a need. Mm -hmm. She was already working in a school in her community, but she decided to come away from working in a, a, another school to create a school right there in the center of her own community for the children who didn't have one during the pandemic because they had a hunger to learn. Mm. that that right there that is just yeah. beyond words that's amazing on so many levels but what I really loved is how everyone in the community after she said I will and she did that amazing um act of faith they jumped in to help 
And that's how we make the changes that need to be. I tell people all the time, you know, we don't change the world, we change ourselves. So when she changed her position to say, I'm gonna move out of this school to start a school over here for these babies, that's how you change the world. <laughs> that's it, that's it. And something, she's here right now, um, she doesn't speak English, I'm gonna say Nikauris. Bravo, bravo. That's something that can be probably understood in every language. Yes. Uh, we're so proud of you. Uh, something that just just so you know how one time Nikari was talking about how when you educate, like people ask her, like, why do you waste your time educating like these 10 kids? And she'd be like, yes, but each one of those kids is going to educate 10 other kids and they are going to educate 10 other kids. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Sometimes we start with one. Just one. And let that one be yourself. Start with you. Start with you. And then pass it on. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm so excited. Okay, all right. Hey. I know, right? Because we're just beginning. I'll, you know, who's next? I'm just so excited. <laughs> yeah, so now we have a beautiful conversation with Dr. Marty and Audrey. And I will pass it on uh, to you, Dr. Marty. Um, I can't wait for this. Well, thank you. So speaking of change makers and knowing how to start with self, even giving back and also being an educator, I welcome to the stage right now, Miss Audrey Jackson. Morning, good afternoon, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my friend, how are you, Audrey? I'm well, Dr. Marty, how are you? Good to see you. It's so awesome to see you always. I wanna go ahead and jump right into our conversation, if you will. And today we're going to be speaking about the um, your organization that you have created, which is, I would say, um, where you picked up the torch from where your son left off, from where Pop Smoke, hip hop artists, um, destined to, to do great things as he, he will continue to do through his legacy. Uh, Pop Smoke was an American rapper, singer, and songwriter, and he was considered by many to be the face of Brooklyn Drill. Born and raised in Canarsie, Brooklyn, Pop Smoke began his musical career in the late 2018 and before the unfortunate act of him being gunned down in Los, Los Angeles, California in 2020. He started the work. He started the work. He started with himself. Tell us a little bit about Pop Smoke and how you've come to create the organization. Tell the vision. <laughs> um, you know, as, as people ask me, you know, what's one thing that um, we don't know about uh, Pop? And I usually talk about his faith. You know, I remember the other day that um, he always wanted to give back, even though, you know, in um, elementary school, he toyed with being a teacher because he wanted to be able to sow into young people the way his teacher sowed into him. Mm. Um, so when he got into this particular position, you know, he wanted to uh, start out with maybe giving technology into the classrooms. And so he created the concept of shooting for the stars. And um, that was, you know, and then he was like, Ma, you, you handle it, right? Um, and then, you know, the unfortunate um, happened. And now, so we are picking up the tour and, um, taken up the torch, excuse me, and are running forward with it. Um, you know, within the industry, the young men are always trying to, our young men are always trying to find a way out of the hood, right? It's basketball, it's, it's being a, a rap artist. And unfortunately in this season, it's taken kind of a wrong turn where uh, language, but the, but because they're not quite sure how to express what they, what they're feeling, they're using language which is which is causing um, what I'm calling revenge killings. So what I thought to do after having spoken to a few people, um, and one particular young lady had access to um, a detention center for boys, um, and she was just so impressed with how gifted they were, even in the situation that they were in, this uh, fine art, just gifted young men. Um, so we thought about just kind of giving them an opportunity while they're waiting and, and doing their thing um, to develop language, right? If you want to be a, 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 a hip hop star, you want to rap, you need vocabulary. You need to be able to express yourself. So this program um, is going to give them an opportunity to um, 
figure out how to say what they're feeling creatively um, so that when they express themselves, no one is feeling threatened or the need to go and harm somebody because they felt disrespected. Mm. Right? So this was this program will also end up being their first step towards building their um, their portfolio uh, when they come out. You know that will that will help them to be able to come out effectively. I I love that. That's so amazing, and I love how you're bridging the arts as well as the healing as well as just that that whole creativity just fusing all of that together and i say all the times that sometimes when we lack the words that's when we load up the bullets but i also say that there's two things that you can never take back once it's released and that is bullets and words words are powerful so my question to you audrey would be um how are you planning to frame helping them to understand that power in the tongue. What does that mean to you in your organization? You know, one of the things that um, we all as individuals need to do is to be able to tap into ourselves, right? Our ability to, to kind of know and understand what we're feeling so we can express what it is that it, what we're feeling to someone else. Um, and that comes from a part of the process that we're going to use is, um, is circles, healing circles, where they get an opportunity to, opportunity to express themselves. Um, and then, you know, hopefully um, learning and teaching moments will grow in those moments. And then we can take some of that stuff and bring it back to their class, their writing uh, sessions to see how well, and what you said during our last healing session, how could you express that in song? Right in a in in the song in the rhythm um, that you want to because I know for our young people it's about having the right beat, right? And one of the things about drill or all music that I'm you know, I'm see, I'm looking at that you know the music in um, the the communities of African ancestry whether it be reggae or or um, or or drill there's a heavy um, drum beat, mm. right? And and so it's the drum beat I think that really kind of inspires them to to need to tell their story in a particular way but it, drums are also healing yes it catches so, in the yeah. body first right <laughs> i love it it catches in the body first this is awesome well audrey we could use this whole time to talk to you of course there's just not enough time to really get deep to deep dive into it but we are going to uh definitely be bringing you back to find out more but congratulations on being a 2022 recipient we look so I, and personally you already know i'm there and i'm going to be the mentor and i'm going to just do whatever is necessary to make sure that this goes across the globe and then somewhere <laughs> even i'm excited beyond. really thank you so much for thank the opportunity to to be able to um work with this organization it's um it, it i'm is looking forward to it it's our pleasure. That's what Purpose Earth is all about. And we thank you for really working on the healing piece to this gun violence, um, this senseless gun violence that is 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 really uh, destroying a lot of our communities and our culture. We really honor you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I'm telling you, if you're not inspired already by our two recipients that we've had an opportunity to meet, I you you just might be in the wrong place today, but I know you're not. So I need you to stay tuned, stay on, share this, tell somebody to jump on right now, because this is just the beginning. We have so much more in store for you. So much more, but I want to say how beautiful, like the, the, the combination of this art, creativity and healing um so beautiful conversation and i want to say audrey welcome to the family so beautiful um okay so next we have uh something super inspiring for all of you we um you know something that we that we're all about here purpose earth is talking about the seeds of change and growth and growth through through the like the, at the grass level right like from here uh and in the nurturing um that that happens that it's that allows us to change the world like that nurturing that we need inside of us so we can serve so we can create that change 
Um, and for that, we have a beautiful, um, beautiful video from Kishu Shai, and she's the co-founder of Belly Queen and Pure, a global community focused on healing and social change through dance and music. Uh, she's performed in uh, 38 countries. So um, let's take a look. Let's, let's, let's see this beautiful video. Welcome, my name is Keishi Chai. I'm a bi-coastal artist based in New York City and the Bay Area. Today, I invite you to join me on a very short tree meditation. Take a moment to breathe deep into your belly. And as you exhale, send your breath down through your feet. As you inhale, your crown reaches up toward the sky. And as you exhale, send the breath through your feet, growing roots out into the soil. Inhale, your spine lengthens. And exhale, your shoulders release. Deep breath in, feel your lungs expand. And as you exhale, Feel them contract. Inhale, breathing into your front body. Exhale, softening. Inhale, breathe into your back body. Exhale, allowing. Hands slowly lift up. Imagine that there's a tiny seed in each palm. From this tiny seed sprouts a little seedling. Its roots are now wrapping around your palms and it's growing up, reaching, reaching, reaching toward the sun. As the roots wrap around your body, Start to feel yourself become the seedling. Your arms are now reaching up toward the sun. Your branches become part of the canopy and you can feel different animals living on your body. The tickle of the caterpillar, the scurrying of the squirrels, Letting your body feel this motion, moving with the wind. Your feet continue to grow roots deep down into the soil, drawing nourishment up from your feet, up through your trunk, out through your branches, enjoying the nourishment coming down from the sun, breathing through every single pore Exhale out, breathing into your back body. Exhale, release and let go. Breathing into your front body. Exhale out. Sensing the green embrace of the other trees around you. Feeling your fingers of your branches touching your fellow trees on either side, your roots entwining with other trees out from underneath you. Breathing in collectively, breathing out. As we exhale, we send out love, we send out gratitude. We send out thoughts of peace and harmony. Inhale in, bring your palms together and exhale to your heart. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> oh, I needed that. <laughs> 
Oh, me too. I feel I like that so much. <laughs> I know I had to go off screen because I was doing things that I was like, I need to breathe and become a tree and just oh, <laughs> take it all in. Oh, I feel like my roots <sighs> growing and intertwining with yours from across the globe and everybody else here. I don't know if you feel it. Let us know if you also can feel it. But my favorite thing was the this part right here. Yes, yes, so, yes being yeah. deeply rooted that's what I feel like a tree like we're so deeply rooted together just mm. being able to do this work mm -hmm. ah. absolutely so thank you so much Keishi for that I know that she's around so welcome and thank you so much for this beautiful uh, film also to Lisa Merton who um who made this film so thank you so much um yes, yes. oh sorry I, I I made a mistake the next one is by Lisa Merton well, before we go there, I just want to share this because I think it's so important for everyone to really understand how Purpose Earth is so connected and bringing everyone together. Purpose Earth is an initiative of Unity Earth whose activities empower worldwide solutions for unity, purpose, and peace. Purpose Earth mission is to fund and mentor purpose-driven people and projects with creative solutions to our global challenges. And I thought it was so important to share that right there after that meditation, because we do understand there are a lot of global challenges. And if we just take the time out sometimes to breathe together and connect and create together, that's how we will continue to change the world as we are celebrating change makers on today absolutely oh so beautiful so grateful for this organization and all the people that i've met like you um and like my friend priya who i see it's also over there thank you thank you thank you um okay so next we have um i'll leave this up to you dr marty is um we have a beautiful trailer trailer now from um someone who's planting um or help plant a lot of trees around the world Oh my goodness, speaking of a lot of trees, how about 35 million? <laughs> 35 million trees have been planted and we are in partnership. Purpose Earth is actually in partnership with the, um, with, with the Green Belt Movement. And I don't wanna say too much about it because it's explained in this video, but we'll talk about it as soon as it's over. Here we go. I was hearing many rural women complain about the fact that they did not have firewood. They were also complaining that they did not have enough water. Why not plant trees? I asked the women. And so they just started very, very, very small, very, very small. And before too long, they started showing each other. It was now communities empowering each other to plant trees for their own needs. When the women started, nobody was bothering them because nobody took them seriously. You know, who takes women seriously? Then the government realized that we were organizing women. So they started interfering with our organizing. <laughs> They want to debase your womanhood. So I said, now don't give me that. Just use the anatomy that matters right now. And that is from the neck up. She was disobedient at a time when disobedience was not tolerated. A lot of our people were imprisoned. A lot of our people were killed. We will never give up in our fight for 
a better government. Going to shed blood because of our land. We It is the people who must save the environment. It's the people who must make their leaders change. So we must stand up for what we believe in. Uh, Jumbo Sana, Kevin. I am looking forward to a conversation about the professor, Wangari Mathai. And I wanted to ask you, you were coming of age as a young man in Kenya when she was becoming so well known as a human rights activist and as a woman rights activist, as she called it, and an environmental activist. I'm wondering if you could share a bit about how you were inspired by the work of the professor? Jambo Sana Peter, thank you for that question. Um, you know, growing up in the 90s, I would always hear uh, Wangari Madai on TV, and especially during this time, it was for human rights, uh, as a human rights activist. And it was inspiring during that time because not many people, you know, would stand up against uh, human rights and uh, violations and more so not many women. So it was inspiring for that time that, you know, the professor was able to stand up for rights and look into the government eyes to ask, hey, we need to do better for the people. But for me, what was more inspiring was in the late 2000s when she got involved really in environmental uh, activism and started planting trees and projects to empower communities. That inspired me when I got to know my um, undergraduate or my university to be able to follow into the footsteps and work with the student organizations and furthermore work with the student organization across the world in able to be able to continue the legacy and of planting trees and for environmental activation. Thank you. And so, and so Peter, uh, just as a follow up, right? As a professor, you took uh, two years off and worked at the Wangari Mathai Institute for Peace and Environmental Studies in Kenya, which honors the work uh, of the late professor. The Institute works closely with the Green Belt Movement to continue her legacy. How was it for you during this time? Mm. Well, after Wangari, past, I was, uh, like millions of others, inspired to do something to contribute to her legacy. And I had had the privilege of helping her to develop this Wangare Matai Institute for Peace and Environmental Studies. And so I was privileged to go there and be a Fulbright professor uh, at University of Nairobi in the Institute. And during that time, I worked closely with uh, the Greenbelt Movement also. And I came to see her work uh, in Kenya and across Africa. And I've reflected a lot, Kevin, over the years on what her contributions were. And I think there are three things I would say. One is that she was deeply moved by ethics. She was one of the authors of the Earth Charter, major intellectual architecture of the Earth Charter really came from Wangari. And she was deeply moved by the need to act upon our ethics. Secondly, she had a deep belief in personal efficacy and persistence. She never gave up. And she believed that all actions that we take are significant. And finally, and perhaps most inspiring for the women of the Greenbelt movement and for young men like you growing up and for old professors like me, is that she was fierce in her commitment to nonviolent resistance. She 
she shed blood for the Kairura Forest, uh, which has now been renamed in her honor. So these are some of the things that I learned from my time of hoping to um, carry on her work. And Kevin, I wanted to ask you, now we're involved on this Grant Selection Council of Purpose Earth. I'm, I'm wondering how you see the relationship. We're starting a partnership with Greenbelt Movement, of course. Um, how do you see the relationship between the legacy of the professor and her inspiration and Purpose Earth? Thank you, Peter, for that. Uh... Uh, you know, I, I was feeling like, you know, you're bringing me back into the moments when uh, Wangari was alive. And just to answer your question here is uh, Purpose Art, uh, we can easily draw, uh, you know, parallels between Purpose Art and uh, the Green Belt Movement, uh, you know, which inspire, which honors her work up to today. And Purpose Art as a history, uh, some of you could check out on the website, has three pillars, you know, the environmental restoration, community activation and cultural collaborations. And all these are some of the things like Peter mentioned before that the late professor really you know, advocated for. And this is shown uh, with our projects across the world. Uh, Purpose Art is funding projects, you know, from like the Empowerment Collective in Nepal. We have the Light on Light for Peace, you know, in the United States. We have conservation, a project on, you know, um, conservation in, in Kenya. We have She is the Universe in Dominican. And if you look on all these projects, they tie in into the three pillars and easily uh, work together with, uh, you know, uh, with the, what the Green Belt Movement is doing and what the professor wanted left as a legacy. And so it's nice to have, you know, a purpose art, for example, try to work together with the Green Belt Movement um, in, in, in a partnership sort of form uh, going forward. And so Peter, maybe as to, to try and wind up here, you were, I, you were honored to speak at the funeral ceremony of Wangari Madai. Could you reflect on the important parts of that moment? Thank you. Oh, Kevin, yes. Um, you remember the grief uh, that the nation felt when Wangare passed. Uh, I arrived in uh, Kenya just in time for the state funeral, and there were hundreds of thousands of people in the streets. Um, that tiny little hearse going through the streets, Wangare had a coffin made of invasive plants from Lake Victoria. She wanted no trees to be cut for her coffin. And it was an incredibly moving time. And it was only the second state funeral in, in the history of Kenya. You know, only Kenyatta had had a state funeral before that. And it was a remarkable time. And there was a, a national period of mourning. And then there was the family funeral. And um, that was also huge. And uh, Desmond Tutu gave the homily. It was in that great basilica, that Roman Catholic basilica, thousands of people in the basilica. And I had been um, humbled and uh, one of the greatest honors of my life, of course, to give a prayer. Um, there were prayers in many languages, Kikuyu, Swahili. I was to give the English prayer. And uh, the prayer was to honor uh, the Green Belt Movement and for world peace. And um, no one will ever remember what I said because of what happened while I was saying the prayer. I was, uh, the bishop was very strict and he said not to look at the audience, which was good because they were heads of state and I would have gotten very nervous. So he said, look at the altar, but across on the far side of the altar, there were 500 women of the Greenbelt movement who had walked from all corners of Kenya. And they were, uh, there, of course, to um, help us uh, uh, celebrate the life of, of Wangari Mathai. And, and so it turned out, I, I hadn't expected, but it turned out I was addressing the women of the, the Greenbelt movement. And as I began my little prayer, um, a tree came up from the, uh, from the women. One of the women had a little um, seedling. We were planning to plant trees after the ceremony, and I continued to, to say my prayer. And as I did, a forest of trees came up. Each woman had a, a tree to plant. And so, uh, as Wangari would call it, a canopy of hope uh, was lifted up uh, during the prayer. 
and it um, it reminded us all of of her of her great work in tree planting, and um, and in I, I look forward, Kevin, to this partnership partly because um, the work of the Greenbelt Movement it's it's um, it empowers people. Um, like those women, it empower. They're mostly poor, mostly women, and it empowers them to take action. And this is what um, I I think will be our inspiration in Purpose Earth is this um, this need to take action based on on what we believe. Amazing, amazing, Peter. I think that's uh, you know, like you call it, we'll wind up here and say a canopy of hope. Uh, is what also Purpose Art is looking forward. And you now, why don't we head over back to the main session uh, and listen to what's going on? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Yeah. A canopy of hope. Wow. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You just met uh, my other brothers. That's, <laughs> wow. oh, my goodness. Again, you just heard from um, our council members, our grant. Uh, selection council members. We're so excited to be a family and to come together and get an opportunity to read the grants and, uh, you know, get to know the projects first and along uh, with um, our production team and being coming, becoming mentors as well as um, individuals from the production team, as well as the grants council uh, members, we, we are also mentors. And so this is just, it, it, it allows us to be a part of these projects that, that uh, we're so excited about. But I have to just mention a tree will be planted in the honor of each of you moving forward. A tree will be planted in, your, in the honor of the work that you're doing around the world. Um, along with the other 28 grant recipients. And uh, we're excited because Purpose Earth, we have already raised over a quarter of a million dollars. And 100% of the money that has been raised goes back to the recipients and the projects that you're doing, 100%. And we are already in 15 countries from around the world. Is that amazing or what? That is and, beautiful. And one of the things that Peter said that I just, I was hanging on to, he says to be empowered and to take action. And mm -hmm. for those who are watching right now and who will share this later, we encourage you to do that exact same thing. Be empowered today and take action. It takes money for us to do this, but we don't keep the money. We give the money away. And we give the money to great projects like the ones you have already met and you've heard. And so if you are inspired today to be empowered, to take action, we want you to also send this information out to others and ask them to join you. Wouldn't that be amazing if you created little small groups in your community to say, hey, let's support Purpose Earth and let's specifically support this project that I heard about today, or maybe go to our website, purposeearth.org and choose maybe a recipient even from last year. But what, what is inspiring you to be empowered and mm. to give back? It's so exciting. I'm telling you, I love what we do. I love being a council member. I My schedule had gotten so, so overwhelming this year. I had to, to remove myself from a lot of different groups and organizations, but this one here, I wasn't touching. I said, I, I mean, I might shut down some stuff that I personally created before I come off of this council because they are just that powerful. And I'm excited to be a part of it. And we thank you again for being a recipient. It's to all who will have a tree planted in your honor. So beautiful. And in the words of Wangari Matai that I love is we must stand up for what we believe in, in all the ways, right? Um, so, so, so inspiring. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Yes. Um, yeah. And okay. So you're ready for what's next? Yeah, I am. Perfect. So we have a video from Kevin um, who visited to uh, a few of our uh, grant recipients in Kenya. So we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at that. Thank you, uh, Dr. Marty and Emmanuel uh, for the opportunity. Uh, so today, my name is Kevin Chiteri. I come from Kenya and I'm part of the uh, 
Grand uh, Selection Council here at Purple South. And today I'm going to talk to you about a visit that I did, uh, some of the projects uh, that have been funded and will be funded by Purple South uh, shortly here. Uh, so the first project that I got a chance to visit when I was visiting my family in Kenya in December was the conservation uh, uh, organization uh, which runs the project called the Chagua Seed Bank as one of you know the prime projects. And the initiative of Chagua Seed Bank is to be able to provide the local farmers, mostly women, uh, with the access uh, to locally sourced uh, vegetable seeds. And so what they're doing is they're using you know, organic uh, local vegetables and working with the farmers to increase seed production. It was a really nice time to see and talk to the farmers themselves because they say it's very hard for them to find the seeds for some of these local vegetables, which they really value a lot. Uh, and as you can see, we were able to go out. They have uh, places where they are taught together, but they also practice this in their individual homesteads. And so we look forward to uh, some, some of the seeds that are going to be coming out of their project. The second project was the Pisedas project, which is a cage fish farming. I was able to meet the beach management unit of this project. And this project is uh, at Lake Victoria, uh, which is in East Africa, but this specifically part in Kenya. And the way fishing is done is that we have uh, fishermen who go out and fish, mostly are men. They bring it to the, uh, to the beach where we have the fishmongers, mostly women, who sell to the other trailers. But with the fish uh, and uh, with the fish cage, uh, the cage fish farming, uh, we are hoping that, uh, you know, uh, that we can now put a cage inside the lake and we are able to harvest uh, the fish at the end of six months. And now this, we are hoping that the fishmongers will have access to more seeds, which they can sell and more money uh, for them and their families. And so in this project, our meeting just these people and talking to them, they would, I would see the real impact of them having this project with them uh, for survival and for empowerment for the young people who are along uh, the shores of this lake. The other newer projects uh, that I did visit, the first one is the Maasai Ngoswani Greening, which has just recently been uh, funded. And we are, hope, we are looking forward to uh, John doing a great job uh, by, the, um, by the fact that the town is a new grow town with no waste management systems. And, and John is gonna try and work with the local elders, with the local community, the local business to develop a waste management system with the grant that we are giving him. He's gonna, um, try and you know empower them with uh, teaching them on what West is and collection points and recycling points. And this is a very fast growing town because it goes to the, um, the famous, world famous Maasai Mara National Reserve where you have you know, uh, the migration that happens every year. Uh, the other project that I visited was the Wamblisha Water Project. And this is a project that had infrastructure but they did not you know, get uh, all the wells down. And so we are hoping that with this, now they're able to uh, get in and get to water to the community permanently uh, year round. And with this, they're able to supply over the 3000 uh, people in the community. Uh, they're able to supply the schools, you know, uh, churches uh, and even mosques uh, in, within, the, within that town. So with this grant, they are able to dig uh, the, the well uh, they're able to supply the water. And uh, Patrick was really grateful to Papa's Earth because he says there's gonna be a real impact uh, with this grant to his community. Uh, so it is really nice and meeting even just some of the people, this water is going to be helpful to the old women, uh, to the old uh, persons, individuals, you know, age, uh, to the disabled, because they have to go for long ways looking for the water. So lastly, I just want to thank you all for the donation that you made to Purpose Earth. It's creating impact, it's saving life, it's empowering people out there. So I look forward um, to more discussions and thank you so much uh, for listening to me. Thank you. Hello, I'm Patrick Mayale Kutwa, the chair of Ambulishe Community Water Project. The project was initiated by the community in the year 2015 and it became fully operational in 2016. The water project serves 300, uh, 500 households, which translates to over 3,000 people. It also includes learning institutions, market centers, and uh, health served well the community for three years. Eventually, 
the borehole started to decrease in production until last year when it dried up completely. We are the community. We are applying for the grant so that we may drill another borehole. The vision of this project is to provide clean and safe water for consumption by the community. By doing this, we have helped the community in the following ways. One, to improve public health by reduction of waterborne disease, which is being uh, currently reported in the area. The second one is to improve livelihood among the community by reducing the time taken to fetch water uh, at, the, at, the, at the springs which are located at steep and dangerous terrains. Thirdly, it will create a conducive learning environment for the people who are always told to go for the water during learning period. So we as the community, we, we are going to appreciate if we can get this grant uh, so that we may have another borehole, uh, so that we may have clean water to help the community. This is John Matilong Sayelel uh, from Kenya, and I come from Narok County in Loita Plains around Moswani. I just want to take this opportunity to introduce myself and also to introduce my community as well. I come from a little community known as the Maasai, uh, a small community in uh, East Africa, mostly in Tanzania and Kenya and uh, they are pastoralists in nature, which means that they keep uh, livestock uh, such as cows, sheep, and goats. And I just want to say that I'm, I'm, I'm very privileged and honored to be, to be one of the members of this community, which is a very well-known community for their traditional and cultural practices. Uh, coming from this dignified community, I just want to say that I'm privileged to be one of the young generation who were able to uh, attend school and uh, finish the higher education. And I just want to take this time to say that uh, it has been a very great resource uh, for me and uh, I'm happy and I have a chance to be able to help my community in uh, facing the modern challenges we are having uh, in today's life. And one of the greatest challenges we have is the waste management. And uh, these waste managements are usually brought up by these commercial trading centers around us. And they're really threatening the life of uh, people, wildlife and environment as well. And, and having uh, been having this kind of a problem, I just uh, thought uh, that uh, we can uh, work as a community together uh, through the uh, funding uh, which was uh, uh, given us by Papa's Earth through my project, which was known as Masai Greening Oswani, which is a project intending to handle this waste management around my local uh, center. And uh, having said that, uh, it's a project that is intending to take a while, but I'm, I'm very optimistic that uh, we are going to uh, work together as a community so that we can uh, secure our uh, best environment as we used to have and uh, educate this community uh, in handling uh, waste, in handling and controlling waste management that are brought up by these commercial centers. They're mostly uh, uh, waste from, uh, you know, like uh, these trading centers, uh, mostly plastics, bottles, uh, plastics uh, in nature. And uh, there are several, uh, you know, and decomposed materials that are being uh, littered all around and it is really threatening the life especially wildlife because they sometimes uh, end up eating this waste and it's harmful to their life and i'm here today to say that i'm privileged to have this project uh, on and uh, we are looking forward to cooperate uh, with uh, purpose art and other you know like uh, interested uh, uh, interested uh, um, interested bodies to make sure that we have a free environment from waste and pollution. With those few remarks, I just want to say thank you very much and may God bless you. And I'm looking forward to work together. Wow, that's so, so inspiring. Like such beautiful, remarkable projects. Um, mm. How amazing. Once again, creating from a need, you know, knowing that clean water is so important to all to live, just to live a healthy, we take so many things for granted, but Absolutely. he, 
he decided, let me do something about that. Let me do what I can, starting with one, starting with self. What can I do? How can I connect with others to make a difference? Again, I, I say to you, we don't change the world. We change ourselves and then the world changes because of it. I'm just, awesome. This is just awesome and amazing. Once again, just beautiful work from all around the world. Bravo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, I don't know if you want to say anything, but we're at that point where we're going uh, to present our last recipient of the day. Absolutely. But before we do that, we just totally have to thank our co-creators, Emmanuel Councilman and Laura Rose. Uh, can I get everyone in the building right now? We need to see your hands. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna make sure I'm doing gallery view because I'm, I'm gonna make sure everybody is clapping right now as soon as I get to my career. Yes, 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 yes. Because this could not happen without Emmanuel and Laura Rose. Talking about giving from the heart, talking about starting with self and then just presenting it to the world. They do it the best. They're the best at it. I mean, they really are. And we thank them from the bottom of our hearts. Again, a quarter of a million dollars could not have ever, not the, the first dollar could not have been raised if it was not for them giving and doing the work. We thank you. All of us from around the world, we thank you. All 28 uh, grant recipients, we thank you. The council, we thank you. The production team, we thank you. All those in the communities that have benefited from the work that you are supporting, we thank you. We thank you. Lada, it looks like you might be on. I want to hear you. You are so beautiful. Wow, You're beautiful like even when we can't hear you. <laughs> so beautiful. I was just like being like here, like just like saying how how much um you know this uh, two people mean to me and um how grateful I am. So thank you from from all of us, also recipients. I know that um I'm speaking for everybody who who also has been uh, has benefited from from their beautiful um hard-led work so thank you and thank you to everybody who's part of our family who has supported us um so far to get us here as well and thank you for those of you who are also thinking of supporting us moving forward so thank you absolutely and you know what i have a little secret i don't know how many people's in this room but i'm just gonna say it like i'm just talking to you but i have a little secret I heard a little bird say that there could be a possibility that some more opportunities to support some people later on could happen this year. I, I'm not sure. Don't hold it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Don't hold me to the coals. But if that happens, I believe some people right here in this room watching right now, they're doing the work. They started with themselves. They created something and they need some help. And so I'm just saying, I'm just whispering a little something you might want to get ready make sure you go to purposeearth.org keep up with us follow us share what we're doing get yourself ready just like these other 28 recipients did just like it happened for them it could happen for you you know just in case something happens later on this year you just want to be ready right mm -hmm. <laughs> get ready get yeah, ready get ready yeah Ooh. they say don't yeah, you know, the, as a matter of fact, don't get ready, be ready. How about that? Mm -hmm. Just be ready. <laughs> I love that. I love, 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 love that. Okay, so are you all ready to see our next recipient um, for whom I'm, I'm so inspired? There's, I just want to say also there's in the chat, there's some links for you to know more about Emmanuel and Laura and the work that they're doing. Um, just like there's so many ways for you to connect with us that we're going to continue to share as well. And they can give. I, I you mm -hmm. know, let me just say that you can also give and be a part of this movement. Mm -hmm. This is a purpose earth. I'm saying it right here today. This is a movement, a global movement, you all. Don't you want to be a part of that action? What did Peter say earlier? He says, empower and take action. Who's taking action today? I just need you to do this. I don't even want you to tell me what amount. 
But if you have been empowered by what you've seen so far, just go in the, the chat and say, I'm taking action. Let me see how many people real quick that's going to say, I'm taking action. And that means that you're going to give something. I don't care if it's $5 to $5 million. Tell me right now you're going to take action. What does that mean to you? Don't even tell me the amount. Let your heart be moved. That's between you and the ones you love and you serve and all of the above. Because I know that if you're told to give $1,000, $1 just won't do. And if you're told to give $100, your $10 just might not get it. So I want you right now to just say, I'm going to take action. I'm taking action today. Who's taking action? Let's call out some names real quick before we move on. All right. Oh, look at all these take action uh, people. There's so many. I don't know if I can call them all out. We got no Noel and Bob taking action. Brad, Brad is taking action. KC is taking action. Courtney, Jill, uh, Rihanna's taking action. Uh, Lily's taking action. Vanessa and uh Serafina's taking action. Kathy Lambert, a good friend of mine, she's taking action. Rachel's take, taking action. Jill Robinson, Amanda is taking action. Oh, I love it. Yes, let's all take action. Woo! Yes, Shout out you. to each of you. Thank and you, everybody. Oh, the tomorrow you're on fire. I love it. I'm like, okay, I thought I was gonna be tired by this time, but I'm like so energized. I hope you're all, all super energized as well. Thank you everybody for like- But well, you know, we got a party coming up. Marty's got to be for the party, right? I got to hype myself up. So we need you all to stay with us because it is going to be a Purpose Earth Marty party going on. Like I said, don't get ready, be ready. Stay with us. Amazing. All right, back over to you. Okay, perfect. Okay, so- um, I'm very excited about this one also because it's uh, it's a project that really touches my heart and it's someone that I know personally and it's an honor to introduce um, their project to you right now. Um, they're, it's a, they have a brilliant vision and um, they combine art with science and community um, and they create something magnificent that I actually will let them speak um, about so we first have a video but we're introducing you to coral uh, global coalition and we'll see a video then we'll bring um angeline to talk about it and um yeah so get get ready let's well, do I it i want to give them a tagline real quick oh <gasps> they're, they're gonna take they're okay. gonna take this home with them are you ready this is yeah this is your Good consolation ahead. gift this is your your tagline for the day okay Using art as a tool, a tool for, for trans transformation. Yeah. <laughs> Using art as a tool for transformation, we have the opportunity to create a reality as beautiful, healthy, and strong as our imagination. Beyond Arawak or Taino culture, it is returning to an essence of being human, of being connected from the heart to all the life, from those clouds to the birds to the last bit of sand to remember our mother every day. In using art as a tool for transformation. Transformation. 
transformation. In using art as a tool for transformation. Transformation. Using art as a tool for transformation. Um, we'd love to welcome Angeline Chen uh, to the stage. Angeline, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi. What an honor. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so, so grateful and honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us more about your project. We'd love to hear more. Sure. Well, um, so I'm one of the co-founders of Global Coalition. I just wanted to share, today is my 30th So if you all were in here for the celebration of change makers, it looks like that completed. And our next um, part of the plenary will be at five o'clock, which will be the daily coherence pulse. So I'm gonna close the room and then someone will come in and open it uh, just before five o'clock for the coherence pulse. <laughs> 